my privilege in the place in which I live. I'm white. I'm a male. I'm heterosexual. I'm highly educated. I make good money. I live in a good part of town. So everything skews toward me. I'm here not because I necessarily want to be in charge or organizing. I'm here because I want to stand with community. I want to stand in solidarity with community. We stand in the shadow of two very important buildings. Right here in this place on the United Nations Peace Plaza. About three weeks into his presidency in 1945, Harry Truman stood in that very building. And he said that we had failed at peace in the past and that we could not afford to fail at peace in the future. Right here in Independence, Missouri, and he proclaimed for the first time that we were one of the original signatories to the founding of the United Nations. Yeah. Right here in this place. We also stand in, in the shadow of this beautiful building across the street we call a temple. And this temple represents an ensign of peace. It represents this idea that this land is sacred. But it's not sacred by virtue of its presence. It's sacred by virtue of our courage to put hands and feet on the work of the gospel. My name is Jenny Jackson, for those of you who don't know me, but I feel like most of you do because I grew up here and I'm one of you. Um, I made note cards because I have so many things to say. I don't know if you know the can of worms just open that, but I've been waiting for you to ask, and that might have been my mistake. I've been forced recently to remember my childhood. Being in elementary school and remembering the first time I learned about the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, the fact that he was martyred, the fact that people were marching peacefully. And I came home and I said, thank God I did not live through that because I don't know if I'm strong enough, but they did it so that I won't. And I built my world of understanding my world of understanding on what it means to be black in America on that truth of the civil rights movement that happened so I could be free. And now I'm going to kept that ideology. I've kept the idea that because of the civil rights movement, I am free in my country and that I have the same rights as everyone else. And since then, since I was in third grade learning about the civil rights movement, I've watched my brothers and sisters die in the streets for no reason. Homes waiting for their babies to come home. Moms and dads waiting for their babies to come home and they didn't because they were brown in the wrong town. Which is a term that I invented years ago when I first found myself in that position. As a server, and a bartender in this community. I have had people deny me the right to serve them food because they don't want to talk to a black person. The same thing has happened to my sister. They didn't want her to touch their food and they sent it back to the kitchen. She didn't touch their food, she touched their plate and they wouldn't acknowledge us. I have been a block away from the place where I work and taking a leisurely walk down the square and had somebody yell, I hate black people out their window. It was dusk, I was alone, there was nobody else there. If they decided that they hated black people enough that they didn't want this black person to go home, they could have, and there would have been nobody there to seek justice for me. <clears throat> silent anymore, I'm here to talk about it. So go to Surge, S-U-R-J, and sign up, and you can get educated, and then once you are, they put you in a situation to educate more people who also want the same change and the same knowledge and the same growth that you came here to find. So don't just march today. There are marches. That is what we need. It's truth to prevail. We cannot turn a blind eye anymore. We cannot stay silent. And my friends, we need each and every one of you to continue to have these conversations, continue to march, and continue to find out where you can plug in. Because let's say, let me tell you something. Everybody can't march. Everybody can't do signs. Everybody, but find a place where you can plug in. And if it just means that you're going through your network of influence and you're having this conversation with your friends and your relatives, that is something. 
I encourage that. I also want you to know, too, we do not hate you. We just want this country to work for us just like it works for you. That's all. That's all. I love you. I love you. I love you because that's what God has put in my heart. To love my enemies, not you, of course. But we are supposed to love our enemies. It's hard. It's difficult. It's difficult to be indicted. And you cower and cringe and you say, that's not me. Y'all, we all have bias, prejudice in our hearts. It's based on our experiences, who we know, who raised us, where we grew up. I grew up in a
not just be wrapped up in our own white fragility, but that we might stand with, that we might speak with, and that we might find the courage to embrace the suffering of the other as if it were our own. And thus we might proclaim the peaceable kingdom of God and we very well might bring about a revolution that leads to resurrection. And God, we confess this not for some punitive reason, but we seek out restorative justice. We invite everybody to the table of restorative justice, regardless of our sins, our ignorance, our explicit or implicit participation. God, we know at the table we are welcomed, we are named, and we're called beloved. May this be so, God. May we find courage. May we find hope. May we find love so that we can do more than just preach and sing about peace. May we put hands and feet on it and make it so. So we pray these things. And whatever name the people in this square call you by or don't call you by, we pray these things as one human family fighting for the soul of humanity. Amen.